Good afternoon, everyone. Shalom. I'm Tal Henrik, spokesperson for the Israeli Prime Minister's Office. Today is day 223 of the October 7th war, and our war aims remain the same. To destroy Hamas's military and governing capabilities, to free all 132 hostages, our stolen people still brutally imprisoned by Hamas in their terror dungeons, they must come back home. And lastly, we want to ensure that Gaza does not pose a threat to Israel and the rest of the civilized world in the future. Our war objectives are within reach. The day after Hamas in Gaza will be achieved the day after Hamas no longer has the capability to terrorize innocent civilians. As the prime minister said yesterday, quote, what we're doing is what we have to do to win this war. We have to destroy Hamas's fighting formations. They have four terrorist battalions left in Gaza. We can't leave that there because they'll reconquer the Gaza Strip, set up their military power again. And they promise, they vowed, to commit these savage murders again and again and again. End quote. This is why the, this is why the IDF is operating in eastern Rafah to destroy the remaining operational terrorist battalions there. The Prime Minister also noted that half a million Palestinian civilians hated the advice from the IDF and moved away from the fighting zones to the safer zones, where humanitarian aid, food, shelter, water, and medical care are available. Now to an update on IDF casualties. Since the outset of the October 7th massacre, IDF fatalities have unfortunately risen to 626. Captain Roy Betyakov was 22 years old from Eli. Staff Sergeant Gilad Arye Boim was 22 from Karmei Shomron. Sergeant Daniel Chemo was 20 from Tiberias. Sergeant Ilan Cohen was 20 from Carmiel. Staff Sergeant Betzalel David Shashua was 20 from Tel Aviv. The five of them fell in the north of the Gaza Strip. May their memories be a blessing. Our hearts go out to all the families of those soldiers killed in action, as well as those who were murdered, taken hostage, and wounded. I want to update you on aid going into Gaza, coordinated by Koget. Israel maintains its effort to get more essential aid into Gaza under strict supervision intended to prevent the transfer of equipment to terrorist elements. In the last day, around 250 trucks of aid entered Gaza. And since the beginning of the war, 28,000 trucks delivering over 530,000 tons of humanitarian aid have gone in. And these are the facts. More food and aid enter Gaza, the Gaza Strip, every day. And that's 80% more food compared to what was imported to Gaza before October 7th. That is more than enough to feed everyone there. The humanitarian aid arrives at the Gaza Strip by sea, by air, and by land. Next, I want to deal with the UN General Assembly May 10th decision to recognize a Palestinian state. I want to share with you that the Israeli government has unanimously decided to reject it, reflecting a clear sentiment within the Israeli public. The prime minister said, quote, we will not reward the terrible massacre of October 7th, which 80% of the Palestinians support both in Gaza and in Judea and Samaria. We will not allow them to establish a terrorist state from which they will be able to vigorously attack us. And now to the most outrageous, yet unsurprising, underreported, repeating pattern, UNRWA. We have already proven that it is collaborating with Hamas. This week, Israel released video footage of armed terrorists shooting from within an UNRWA compound alongside UN vehicles. That's armed terrorists inside the UNRWA logistics warehouse in eastern Rafah, from where aid is distributed in Gaza and also shooting at civilians right outside. We repeat this again. UNRWA is in bed with Hamas. UNRWA must be replaced with other organizations which are not tainted by support for terrorism. UNRWA is not part of the solution, but it is part of the problem. UNRWA's raison d'etre is to perpetuate the conflict. And finally, every day the fake figures used about this war are being discredited. 
Yesterday, Prime Minister spoke about the ratio of civilians to combatants killed in this war as one of the lowest in urban warfare history. And today I want to shine a light on the World Health Organization. Since this war began, the World Health Organization has been reporting Hamas Ministry of Health figures without question. This is even more troubling because these are the figures quoted in South Africa's submission to the ICJ. You will have seen that the UN Office for Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, OCHA, has significantly modified the numbers of casualties in Gaza. It is proven beyond any doubt that the data of the Hamas Ministry of Health in Gaza is part of the Hamas fake propaganda apparatus. That's the end of our briefing for today. I will now take your questions, which you should put in the chat box within, uh, and also mention uh, your news outlet, please. Thank you. Uh, first question from Joel Pollock of Breitbart News. Can you explain uh, why the government press office sought to publicize a speech by the defense minister in which he criticized the government's own policy and related why did a member of the government choose to start a public debate, a, a debate about the day after in the midst of the war and facing international pressure? Thank you, Mr. Pollack, for this question. I'll um, address uh, your question. Uh, you see, Israel is a vibrant democracy. Uh, it, the citizens of this country and also the country's elected officials are entitled to voice their opinions. It's important to note that the war cabinet, the government, the people of Israel are overwhelmingly united to achieve our just war objectives. And uh, as I just mentioned at the top of the briefing, one of our war objectives uh, is to ensure that Gaza will never pose a threat to Israel ever again. And this is why we say that first, Hamas must be destroyed. You know, you can't control a territory. They can't control a territory. Uh, we, we can't let them uh, have an army of terror. It's unacceptable. It's a decision that we took as a nation. And, and second, Israel must maintain security responsibility uh, to, in Gaza to make sure that we don't see a resurgence of terrorism after Hamas is gone. And, and there will be such attempt. You know, we must be able to deal with these attempts in the future to go in and out whenever needed. So uh, I'll say it this way. There will be zero compromise on our security. We'll do whatever it takes to protect our people. And uh, third, uh, we also say that the reconstruction of Gaza must be intertwined with de-radicalization of the Palestinian society. Otherwise, you know, it's just back to square one. And this is why the prime minister said yesterday that he, uh, he, he will not agree to uh, exchange Hamastan with Fatahstan. Uh, we've been very consistent, reasonably consistent in our demand that no organization, no entity which funds terrorism or educates children to terrorism, to glorify martyrs, uh, believe that the refugees until the, the state of Israel uh, will one day cease to exist. No such entity will run Gaza in the day after Hamas. It's not what we want to see. Uh, and, and again, this is a reasonable demand that is supported by most Israelis. Um, and, and I'm not just saying it, you know, you, you, you guys are the media, your news outlets, you have presence on the ground also in Israel. You can go ask Israelis yourself, go to uh, some of the major cities, talk to people on the street. And, and in these words, you know, ask them if, if they want to replicate the Palestinian Authority pay to slay scheme, education to terrorism and the Fatah military wing and, and have them in the Gaza Strip. So uh, there's your answer. Thank you. Uh, another question from Joel Pollock at Breitbart News. Is the American policy of withholding a shipment of bombs changing Israeli strategy on the ground, for example, causing more soldiers to enter or avoid potentially booby-trap buildings that otherwise would have been bombed? So uh, this is a question that I can't uh, specifically address uh, for the very reason that we don't uh, speak about military strategy happening on the ground or military strategy moving ahead. Uh, what I can say is that um, it's no secret that we have certain disagreements with our best friends and it's okay. It happens in families. We share concerns with the Americans. We, we are in constant communication with them. We appreciate the support that we have received so far and, and continue 
continue to receive from the White House, from the U.S. Congress, and from the American people. We see the overwhelming support to our war objectives uh, in polls. So we appreciate all of it for giving us the tools and 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 you know to, to do whatever it takes to to defend ourselves. Um, this is all I can say in that respect. Thank you. That's the last question. And that concludes daily briefing for today. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dijabnik signing off.